Apple was the first company to break into the Fortune 500 in 1983, and it has maintained that position ever since. And we all know why. Apple has always strived to provide customers with industry-leading performance and cutting-edge proprietary technologies. And it is also well known for its highly efficient use of energy, which allows them to produce products that are the finest in their respective categories. The adoption of cutting-edge silicon process technologies year after year is one method through which they accomplish this goal. And now, with the A15, Apple is the first company in the industry to take advantage of the breakthrough in nanoscale technology. But what benefit is it going to provide you? Whether you are a simple person or a tech savvy who demands extra work from your smartphone, do you really need it? And is it going to make a big impact? Let's find out in today's video. The Apple A11 Bionic, the foremost member of the Bionic family, first appeared in the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone X, and was the first Apple A-series chip to include artificial intelligence support thanks to Apple's neural engine. As successive versions were built on top of one another, we were able to witness improvements in device compatibility, quicker and more efficient core performance, reduced power consumption, and a variety of other features. Apple has always provided the highest level of service to its consumers and has never let them down with its smartphones in terms of speed and usefulness. The company has consistently been able to provide the quickest processors available in the whole industry. For example, Apple's A13 processor, which is only available in the Apple iPhone 11, is much quicker than the handsets released that year. Soon after, the iPhone 12 was released with an A14 Bionic processor, which quickly gained the reputation of being the fastest chip on the market while still being robust. However, with the introduction of the Apple 13, things have completely changed. The iPhone 13 series is equipped with the A15 Bionic processor, which has passed all testing and has shown to be much quicker than the prior A-series Bionic chip. Sounds pretty interesting, right? Now you would question, is this upgrade worth it? Or is this the time to switch to iPhone if you are not an Apple user? To know that, first, let's talk about the architectural design of this chip. Apple's A15 Bionic is a 5 nanometer system on a chip, also called SoC. It offers six cores, which are divided into two performance cores and four power efficiency cores. When compared to the A14, the CPU performance improves just a little bit, but here comes the big news. The GPU performance improvement is clearly quite substantial. You can see the complete specs on your screen. Please do remember that the base model iPhone 13 has four GPU, unlike iPhone 13 Pro. Now, here are detailed specs of A14 Bionic so you can compare the two chips. So, typically, the next processor generation has smaller process nodes, which allows for faster performance due to the increased number of transistors. The A15, on the other hand, is manufactured using the same 5 nanometer size manufacturing method. But Apple has confirmed that the A15 Bionic would have 15 billion transistors. This is a significant increase above the 11.8 billion transistors found in the A14 Bionic, resulting in a significant performance boost when compared to the iPhone 12. The A15 Bionic processors will also have the same amount of CPU cores as the A14 chips, which is 6 cores, 4 energy efficient cores, and 2 high performance cores for a total of 6 cores, just like we said earlier. Now, because of the enhancement to the architecture, the all-new iPhone 13 will be much more powerful than the previous model. In an unorthodox way, the company is providing two different A15 Bionic configurations in terms of graphic performance. Because of this, the iPhone 13 Pro will feature five GPU cores compared to four on the iPhone 13. This will result in 13 Pro being much quicker when it comes to editing videos and running games. According to Apple, this is the most powerful graphics performance available on a smartphone currently. Just looking at the cores, the highest frequency per core in the A15 hit 3,240 MHz, compared to the maximum frequency per core of 2,998 MHz in the A14. The two core clusters showed an 8% increase in single core performance, but when both performance cores are active, there is a 10% average improvement in single core performance. Performance gains were also seen in the efficiency cores, which experienced an increase of 10.5% over the A15, with a maximum frequency of 2016 MHz compared to 1823 MHz. Apple increased the size of the system cache from 16 MB in the A13 and A14 to 32 MB in the A15, which has helped to improve speed even more. Latency testing showed that the system cache had been expanded, allowing memory accesses to remain on the same silicone for extended periods of time rather than looking for DRAM. 
However, Apple did not mention changes to the L2 cache of the performance cores, which was raised by 50% to 12 megabytes, which is the same size as the version found in the M1. The access latency has also increased from 16 cycles to 18 cycles, and the A15 is capable of one cycle accesses to cache lines in the L1 cache, while the A14 had to go three cycles. Despite the fact that the efficiency cores maintain their 64KB L1D and 4MB shared L2 caches, the L2 TLB has been extended to 2048 entries in order to cover up to 32MB of memory. Also, the efficiency cores benefit from quicker DRAM access. In performance testing, the A15 outperforms the A14 on a multitude of processing activities across the board for the performance cores, while power consumption for the identical workloads on those cores is also lower. With the A15's performance cores, it is estimated that the overall energy efficiency increased by 17% on its highest performance compared to the A14. Even the efficiency cores benefit from the improved speed, which is 28% faster while maintaining the same efficiency as before. Rather than being 50% quicker when compared to the competition, the A15 is 62% faster according to the report's reasons. Quote, While Apple's bigger cores are more power-hungry, they are nonetheless much more energy efficient than their previous counterparts. Pre-release testing conducted with Geekbench revealed an overall 21% increase in CPU performance between the A15 and the A14. On the graphics card front, the A15's 4-core GPU outperformed the A14 by 14% in the 3 d Mark Wildlife test, while the 5-core GPU outperformed the A14 by 30%. Apple is likely lowballing things again, since the 5-core GPU's peak performance is essentially twice that of its closest rival. The gains increased in the GFX Bench Aztec High Test, with a 46% improvement in the 5-core while 19% in the 4-core. Also, the Apple A15 Bionic is equipped with a 16-core neural engine that is capable of doing 15.8 trillion operations per second, improved machine learning allowing features like Siri and live text and camera to perform better. Now, please take a sec to hit that like button. If you are enjoying this video, we really appreciate this. The A15 Bionic chip has outperformed all its rivals in terms of performance. Tests showed that the A15 Bionic outperformed the A14 Bionic, and this will be the most powerful and quickest CPU the company has ever built. Now, if you are tech savvy and you need performance from your phone, you would have already realized by now that the new A15 Bionic is definitely a game changer for you. These scores are literally going to take your work and processing loads to a new level. There is absolutely no doubt about it. You will love a more powerful and energy efficient device. Now for our friends who have iPhone 8, 10, or even 11 and are considering moving to iPhone 13, we would recommend that shift even for normal daily tasks because of the smoothness, the clarity is there. But if you are using an iPhone 12 series phone and you are good with normal daily tasks, we would say it's fine not to upgrade because the performance difference between A14 and A15 for a casual person is negligible. And if you are not an Apple user and considering buying an Apple phone, we would recommend going for the latest iPhone 13 series. You would love it. So this wraps up today's video. We hope you have enjoyed it and found this helpful. We would like to know your thoughts about Apple's new A15 Bionic chip. Are you enjoying it or are you considering upgrading to it? Let us know in the comments section. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel and press the like button. We keep bringing you such amazing videos, so stay tuned. We will see you in our next one.